when you're working on code, you're usually going to be working on different ideas, especially if you're doing research, where you want to try something and you don't want to have the commitment of maybe putting it into your actual code. This is something that you can do via branching. Imagine that you're on a highway and you're just kind of driving on this two-lane highway and it's just you. Now, you want to try a different idea. So what you can do is kind of like clone that highway. And now you have two highways of you in an alternate universe traveling to the same place. So now you have two versions of you. Now, in this other highway, I can make all the changes that I want. And if I like them, then I can bring them back to the original highway. And if I don't like them, and if I don't like them, I can just kind of delete that universe and it never happened. So that's a really cool and powerful idea because it means that I don't have to really get committed to making any changes to my original code. Keep your original highway pristine and then create your other branches to explore ideas and go nuts and do whatever you want, break your code, whatever. And if it works, then go ahead and merge it back. If it doesn't work, kill the branch and move on. This is also going to be very useful when you're collaborating with other people because they're going to be able to try ideas on their own, on their own computers, on their own time. And then you can even tr check out their branches to see what they're working on without interrupting your work. So before I discovered what branching was in Git, my workflow was incredibly messy. So I usually created a folder for each project, but at some point I wanted to, let's say, experiment with a new feature or maybe even have someone contributing to my project. So what I did is I was creating a copy of this uh, folder while, let's say, someone else was working on it. I was also making progress on my original project. And then it became incredibly messy by like uh, not knowing who is uh, currently working on what and back, uh, merging back the changes. So with Git branching, it allows me to really have an independent branch that is also still organized in the same project and I can efficiently later on merge changes very elegantly as we will see. So let's create a branch on our simple code. So what is our code doing right now? It's just adding a few numbers and creating an array. Great. I'm going to explore an idea where instead of adding, I want to multiply the numbers. So I'm going to create a branch called multiply. Again, branching names are really an art, I guess. It's up to you what you want to call them. But I'm going to say git branch, and then I'm going to say multiply. That's just the name of the branch. Boom. That creates the branch. If I want to see the branches that I have, I can just type git branch and press enter. That's going to show me that I have two branches, master and multiply. It's like I just now created that new highway, but I'm still running on this original highway. So if I want to change highways, I have to actually tell Git to do that. So I'm going to say Git checkout multiply. And now it says I've switched to branch multiply. Whatever I do here is not going to affect what happens over there. So now I'm free to experiment. I can do whatever I want. So I'm going to go back to my code and I'm going to actually change this and it's, not, it's going to be y equals x times 2 now instead of add. And I'm going to run my code, and then I'm going to see what happens. Cool. So it works, and maybe I like, the, I like what just happened, and I like this idea. So I'm going to go ahead and merge it back into my master. So let's first see that on this multiply branch, I now have these changes, which is very simply just multiplying. So I'm going to do git status, and you're going to see that my main.py changed. So if I do git diff to see what changed, I see that I removed one line, which is y equals x plus 2, and I added a new line, which is y equals x times 2. If I'm happy with those changes, I'm going to commit them. So I say git commit changed to multiplication. That's just my little message. I press enter. Now I do git status, and I see that it's clean, meaning there's no changes to track. Now, my code, again, shows a multiplication here. If I go back to my master branch, so I do git checkout master, I see that my code changes back to addition. And so you can see that I now have these two worlds that I'm tracking on my laptop, which is really cool, because now I have two versions of my code that I can go back and forth between until I decide that I want to make in the same version. And also, if you feel like these terms make no sense at all, for example, git checkout, why is it called checkout? 
we are all wondering about that. We don't know why these terms were chosen. Sometimes they uh, sound a bit more complicated than they really are. But again, this is something you will get used to over time. So for now, if checkout seems weird, think about switching branches. It's like the same thing, the same concept. We are just switching back and forth on which branch we are on. So let's go back to the universe where my code is multiplying. To go back there, I'm going to check git checkout, multiply. And now I'm back in the universe where my code's multiplying, and you can see that it changes back to multiplication. Great. If you're doing research or building a model or anything, at some point you might want to say, cool, this idea did work out. Like usually in AI research, what will happen is you're going to be on a branch for like months trying a whole new idea. And then it maybe does work out, right? And you say, oh, actually, I did classify better or improve the metric that I was looking for. At that point, you want to go and merge that code back to your master so that your collaborators can use that code. If it didn't work out, you can keep the branch there. You don't have to delete it. You can keep it there for future reference and then create a new branch altogether with a brand new idea. This is a case where I actually want to make the changes back to the original highway. So all I'm going to do is git checkout master, and then I'm going to do git merge multiply. What you're doing is saying, I'm back on my original highway. Go ahead and merge the stuff from that other highway into mine so that now I have the same changes. So I do this, boom. Now all the changes are the same. So if I look at my code, now my master has the multiplication. And now I see that if I do git status, these two branches are the same. So you can think about it like the master branch was a little bit back behind the changes that were in this branch. And in fact, when you use git enough, it'll tell you this branch is behind by three commits, whatever. That's what they're talking about. It. So when it merged the changes, I'm fast forwarding my head, which is another git term, to where the other branch was. So I'm basically bringing them together. At that point, I don't need this branch because they're the same. So I can delete it if I want. I am a neat freak about branches because it means that my collaborators won't be confused about why I have 50 branches just laying around. So I'm going to actually delete the branch. So I'm going to do git branch dash D, capital D, and then the branch that I want to delete, multiply. Boom, I deleted the branch. It also removes the files changes, so it's going to actually make your project a little bit smaller. So when I do git branch, I only have one branch now, which is my master branch. Also, we merged, but in certain workflows and certain companies, they might actually require something called rebasing. If you work at a company, a lot of times they may require you to rebase because that's just how the process is for those specific teams. Rebasing is just another way of merging, and all it does is it forces you to go commit by commit to approve the changes. You had enter, enter, change, and then if everything works, then you've brought back the changes to master. There are a lot of ideological differences about merge versus rebase. There, I don't think it matters, really. It's up to you, so. 